afternoon. How are you this fine Friday afternoon? My name's Christine and I'm one of the Google Digital Garage trainers. And today we're going to be talking about um, a tool that's great for any business. Um, and that's knowing what's going on on your website. We're going to be talking about analytics. It's not just about, we won't just be focusing on your website today. We're looking at all the different ways that you as a business can measure what's going on um, with your channels, with your uh, traffic on the internet. So as I say, my name's Christine and I'm one of the trainers for Google's free skills training program, the Google Digital Garage. I'm a marketeer by trade and I'm not really the kind of marketeer who can tell you which colour looks better on your leaflets. I'm the kind of marketeer who makes good decisions for your business based on data. Um, alongside me, I have got the wonderful Zoe. Zoe's also one of our experienced uh, Google Digital Garage trainers. Um, Zoe's in the chat right now. She's there to answer questions. She might pose you some questions. She'll give you links. Um, basically be an all-round great font of interactive knowledge for you. So uh, first thing, first piece of housekeeping is to uh, chat with Zoe. You're going to need to be signed into a YouTube account. If you're not signed into a YouTube account, pop up to the right, uh, click on the icon, get yourself signed up or signed in. By the time you've done that, I'll have finished the introductions. While we're doing introductions, why not bob into the chat right now? Um, introduce yourself to Zoe. Maybe tell us a little bit about you, whether you're in business, why you've joined us today, and maybe where in the world you're joining us from. Because we do know, even though we're based here in the UK, we do have people from all over the globe and um, joining us for our sessions quite often and you are very welcome no matter whereabouts you're from. Um, so other thing you'll know you're chatting to the moderator because called Zoe and has a little blue spanner next to her name. Um, any trouble viewing the webinar? Best thing is to do is just refresh it um, then that fixes most of the problems people see. We are going to be keeping this live for about 24 hours so um, best way to sound silly, how to watch the video, watch it through with me, take notes as you go. And if there's anything you think, aha, that's what I need to know, drop down the time code of the video and then you can come back and watch it later. Much better to do that rather than pause the live stream, because if you pause, then you fall out of sync with the questions and answers. Um, questions and answers really, really uh, useful to us. As I say, Zoe will answer your questions as we go through, but we're also going to pause throughout the session to answer some of those questions live on air together. So do get those questions into us as we go through. Um, so you do know we're running this Google, Garage, Google Digital Garage virtual training as part of our broad offering of courses. So if you want to check out the schedule, see what's coming up, it's probably how you got here in the first place, but do check our um, website. The description below contains links to our website um, and that's where you'll be able to get all that great info. All right, that's our um, housekeeping, I think, done. Let's have a look at what we're going to take a look at today. So today we're going to be thinking about data, about analytics, about answers. And to do that, we're going to actually think about questions. Okay, so what are the really important questions that you need the answer to, to make good data based decisions about your business? So we'll think about the questions, what are the right kinds of questions? How do I work out what questions to ask? Then, as I mentioned, this isn't just about your own website, we're going to look at some of the different places that you can use to get information um, about how you're performing online, how your business is doing, what, who your people are. We'll ask, we'll have a look at for those different kinds of questions, the different places, the different tools that you might want to use to find out more um, of those answers. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take a bit of a look at one of the tools in a bit more depth. And I've mentioned it a couple of times already, you might have heard of Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a fantastic tool if you are, if you have your own website and you want to see how you're going, um, then it's absolutely worth uh, checking with um, how your website's doing. The other reason that we talk about Google Analytics is that it's probably one of the more complex tools, shall we say. It's very comprehensive. So if you can get to grips with Google Analytics, all of the rest of the tools feel a lot of a breeze um, after that. 
So we'll take a look at those three things. Um, just something I wanted to mention, and I know we do have people joining us from all over the world today, but um, if you happen to be based here in the UK and you happen to have a business or a charity um, and you'd like some help, then we do have an offering for uh, you can sign up for free one-to-one -one mentoring sessions um, from Google. So as I say, these sessions are completely free and can help you one-to-one -one on a range of digital skills. That might be building a strategy. It might be finding your customers online. It might be getting a bit deeper answers with the analytics that we're talking about. So if you want to join in with that, uh, you can sign up and book a session at g.co forward slash UK mentoring. All right, then let's jump in then on our first section, which is all about questions. So what I'm going to do um, for the rest of this session, we're going to kind of follow a four step framework, which is how to go about getting answers from your data. So in terms of getting the right answers, it means you have to get the right questions. So we're going to start by thinking about your objective. What is it that you actually want to achieve what questions you know what, what what data do you need when we think about our objective as a business we boil that down to some questions that we can ask of our data then we'll look at where you get that information from and finally what can you actually do with that information we're going to work through those steps so first of all before we get looking at numbers and charts and data tables, I want to take it right back to what we're actually trying to achieve. Okay, so what is your objective? And your objective for your data, for your marketing should be really, really closely linked to what actually you want to achieve as a business. So as a business, what are you trying to achieve? Is it to sell some more things? Is it to make sure people know about your business? Is it to find out who's most likely to buy with you, who your most valuable customers are. Is it, to, as a business, do you want to sell more things to more new people or sell more things to people who you've met before? Whatever you want to achieve as a business, you can track it and measure it using data from the internet. You can even track things that you do offline if you can then bring people in to the online world. Um, so what you want to be thinking about is what you as a business want to achieve. So if you'd like to, why not have a, if you have a little thing, you might know this already. So for your business, question, first part of our session, all about objectives, what are your business objectives? Sell some things, sell more things to new customers, for example. You can let Zoe know those if you want. The more we, when I ask you questions, um, what we can do is as we learn the answers, I learn a little bit more about who's joining us today. We can be able to start tailoring um, the, what we say to help you uh, make sure that you are able to meet those objectives. All right. If you want to know more about online objective setting, then we cover that in quite a lot of detail in one of our in our digital marketing strategy sessions. So head to the website, follow the links down in the description below and join us for our digital marketing strategy where we cover a high level um, overview of all the different things you might want to do as a business using digital. And these two sessions, what you want to do and how you're going to measure it really do work very closely together. So let's take it on a step. Imagine we've identified, very clearly laid out what we want to achieve as a business, what our objectives are. Now, in order to get the data to help us know how well we're doing, because that's what our data wants to tell us. We want to look into the past and think, well, you know, what effect did some actions? I took some actions, what effect did they have? Did I sell more things? Did I reach more people? So what questions... Do I need to know the answer to, to know whether I'm winning or not? All right. And in order to get the right, the good answers to those, you've got to frame the questions correctly. We don't just want to think about measuring the easiest thing to measure. It's about finding those, um, those measurements that are really going to give us that really good insight. Okay. 
So there are different types of questions you might want to um, ask about your business. And we're actually going to think about this is there are different questions to ask at different stages of your business life cycle. So we've put these into a funnel and the kind of um, questions we're using the REEN framework. OK, so REEN is reach, engage, activate and nurture. So if you think about that as a sales funnel, first up, we need to reach new people. Then we need to engage with them. Then we need to nurture them through. Sorry, then we need to activate them, get them to take the actions we want to take. And then we nurture them afterwards. OK, so if we think about our customer life cycle or our sales funnel, all of these words involve finding people, meeting people, getting them to know who you are, getting them to take an action and then looking after them later. So we're using the REEN framework for day. So for reach, if I'm reaching out to find people, then you want to be thinking about, you know, who are those people? What's your target audience? Who are they? Where are they? Right. So we start to get some questions around that, engaging them. What are they doing? How what do they like? What content kinds do they have? Um, what needs do they have in terms of information? You can then look at activation. What actually gets people to press the button and buy the product or pick up the phone and call me? Are they actually booking with me? And then nurture, we can start to think about measuring. Well, are they coming back? Are they telling their friends? What do they do after? we've won that initial sale okay so let's break those down a little bit so reach questions i want to reach out and find people all right so the kinds of questions you might want to ask are about well how do people find me online um it could be who are those people who find me is there anything about them that you know what brings them to me what are they searching for? Those target customers. Um, so in those steps, you want to try and identify the steps as you're reaching out to them, where they're hanging out, what they're doing when they're looking for a business like yours. How do they find you? You know, where are they coming from? These kinds of questions. So have a think about questions for you. You know, you may well start with a gut feel that you kind of know where people are coming from. That's fantastic. What I would suggest then is you're going to need later to look at the data that challenges any assumptions you make. Sometimes when we just know something, we may be putting our own biases on. And biases are really interesting to think. You can get data and statistics to back up pretty much any point of view. So I want you to recognize your own bias when you're asking the questions. Try and go into it with a really um, open frame of mind, I guess. So how are people finding you online? What are they searching for? How do I reach out and get those people's attention? So there's questions around that. But it might be that your objective is more about, OK, I'm finding lots of people. Lots of people are finding me. I want to know how well they're engaging with me. Are they finding the content that they need? What kinds of content do they really seem to resonate? What really seems to resonate with them? So we can move through into engage questions. So you want to be at this point. If you're finding lots of people and you want to improve the way you engage with them, you'd be looking at engage type questions. And as I say, we'll then go, so our question, what are people engaged with me once they find me online? There's loads of places we can go to look and see the answers to that. So right now we're just thinking about those questions and trying to uh, quite scientifically work out, well, if, you know, if I can identify what content, for example, people are engaging with, I might then be able to use that to do more. If I run an experiment and try something new, how am I going to measure it and see if it's working or not? What does success look like for this particular stage? So then we move through into the activation. Now, activation is taking an action. So for some businesses, that might be, as here, which channels drive those bookings? I've got people coming in from Facebook and people coming in from Instagram. Which platform drives people to actually take the action and book? But an activation doesn't have to be 
a booking. Not all of us have an online selling site where we can just follow it through. Those activation questions might be about who picks up the phone and calls me, who fills in my online contact form. It might be all about um, who those people actually are. So I've got all these people I reach, some of those people I engage with. Is there anything about those people I reach who then engage who actually get them to make that booking? We might learn about them as actually we thought they were, you know, male and a certain age. Is that true? So we there again, and this is where bias comes into it a lot. We we have the idea when we set up a business, when we enter, well, this is who we're trying to reach. We can use the data to really fathom out if that's who, who's, who, who's actually doing that. But as I say, those activations don't have to be an online sale. There are loads of steps that people can take along that journey, down that funnel. So an activation... You might know, say you're a building company, you might know that if people ring you for a quote and you go out and quote them, you're going to win 50% of those quotes, for example. So actually, you can look into, well, how do I get them to pick up the phone or fill out that online form? Okay, so lots more than just who puts the product into the back basket. All right. And finally, there's what happens after that activation after that sale after that um, piece of business has been concluded potentially do people talk about you do they talk about you positively are they recommending you are they leaving reviews do you have the kind of business where actually once you've won a customer they can then come on back and buy from you again so it's really um, especially if you do have that kind of business where you know, somebody might come back. How do we encourage people to stay in touch? How do we um, find out what methods they want to be in touch with us? So with those questions, those ideas of nurturing questions, we can really start to deepen our relationships. The nurture questions might be what channels, whereabouts are they, if they are talking about you, whereabouts are they talking? Do they post on Instagram after you've sent them the parcel? Are they recommending you on the local Facebook group as somebody who would be great fit for their friends and family? So be thinking about what happens after that sale as well. All right. And that's when we're thinking about that. We're thinking about our nurture. Now, in a minute, we're going to go back and go into a little bit more detail about where you might find data about some of those questions. But just before we do, I'm going to check in with Zoe and see how it's going out there for you. Um, Okie dokie. Oh, we've got a fantastic, fantastic question from Crystal, um, which is one I think Zoe said that's going to be an ongoing question. It's one of those what is better questions. I love that and I love a what is better because the answer kind of is it depends on lots of different things. But Crystal has a jewellery business um and you know when you're just starting selling products online is it better to have your own website for analytics or list your product on a marketplace now we're going to take a look actually at a, at a moment in um at some of the different places that you can get data from so it really does lead me on quite nicely so thank you for that crystal the answer is definitely it depends. You can get a really rich source of data. Five years ago, when I first started um, working with Google Digital Garage, I probably would have said, if you want to know the answers to the data questions, you're best to own that data, to have your own website, to own that own data. But actually, the social selling sites in particular have got so good at helping to provide data that... The analytics side of things, the measurement side of things, um, shouldn't have to come into that business decision. Now, that business decision, join us back if you haven't already for the digital marketing strategy and maybe some of the, the, um, the other business uh, webinars that we run, because actually there's lots of um, pros and cons. There's good and bad to each method of doing it. So as I say, the answer, as always, does kind of depend. But yeah, I think so. He said that um, she'll check back in with you. 
Um, but let us know towards you as uh, which way your thinking's leading. The good thing is, whichever way you choose that's right for your business, you will be able to get some really good measurement from it. So amazing. Thank you for that. What we will do is take a look at some of those tools that you can use right now. OK, so in our framework today, we've thought about the objectives of the business. We've thought about the kinds of questions we need to address. To be honest, Crystal, you might decide, well, I'm going to try both and see which one works better because you might have different people finding you in different places. You might have, you know, to do a lot of work up front to get people to your own website. But once you get them to your own website, then you own that nurturing phase. Lots and lots of decisions to be made um, and lots of different places we can get the information from. So different kinds of tools we're going to think about today. Social. Social media is a wonderful place for businesses and um, for marketeers to get data from. So we'll take a little bit of a look at that. Um, and, and it's kind of, it doesn't, the platform, you don't, you can now pretty much get any platform that is um, developed enough to want to have businesses advertising on it, to want to have businesses selling on it. It's going to be to help you do that by giving you lots of good data to the point where it's actually sometimes hard to know which data is going to be the most useful to you. Um, so we'll take a look at that. We'll look at search and how, you know, are people finding you? There are ways you can look and see about search. Obviously got our own website, which we will park off to the end a little bit. Um, and we can also think about paid search. Lots of different sources of data. And I would say as a kind of golden rule, if your business is getting to the point where you want to pay to get your message out there, so paying through social media placements, paying through search, it's even more important that you get your measurement systems right. Now, some of that is the business maths. If I spend so much on ads, I need to generate this much in sales to justify the ad spend. So there's that kind of basic business. Um, mathematic thinking that has to happen as well and that can give you a really good because the other question we tend to get a lot at a lot is you know how much should I spend on and it's very different amounts of spend if you're selling you know paper clips at 30p for a bucket it's very different than if you're selling luxury holidays at thousands of pounds the maths is going to be different and the channels you might want to use will be different too. As I say, check us out um, and some of our other webinars if, if you need to go a bit more in depth into those questions. So let's have a little bit of a think then about social media. So social media platforms, things like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, all of these offer insights for businesses. If you want, if a web, if a social platform wants businesses to advertise, they are going to want to give you as much information to make it as easy as possible for you to justify that business spend. Okay. So if you have a business profile on a social media platform, you probably already have a really good source of data already. Um, fantastic, uh, ever evolving, place to get your information from it. Um, and there again, if five years ago, if you'd have said, this is what I want to do, I want to have a business, I want to sell online, you probably would have had to set up your own website. Nowadays, you can have setting up a website means bringing people to you, you then own them when they get there, you own those interaction when they get there. But with social media, with online marketplaces, you can go to where the people are. So that really helps you to work out what you're going to do. So say you've got a, this is um, uh, a snapshot from a Facebook report. What you want to be starting to look at is thinking about if I take an action, what happens? 
So here you can see that, you know, maybe reach is going up and down, how far you're reaching out. You, I would expect to see, for instance, very first boxes, um, this will be tiny, tiny on your screens. And um, especially if you're watching on a mobile device, for example. But what we've got is we've got uh, an overview of actions on a page, people viewing a page, people liking the page, all of those terms we've come to know and love. Now, this will come back as well to value. OK, so when you're thinking about what's going on with your data, it's fantastic to reach lots of people. It's fantastic to get a ton of likes on a picture. But I want you to remember that you cannot pay the bills with likes. The banks won't accept shares and engagement as currency. So a lot of when you're looking at, especially social media, but a lot of your analytics, it's going to be sorting out almost the vanity stuff. Oh, I got a thousand likes. Brilliant. Pat your back. But if I wanted to set, if I wanted to get likes, I'd post pictures of cute cats doing cute things or pictures of my lunch or pictures of a workout. They're not going to help me to sell my industrial widget. So you really do need to keep coming back to what's the actual story? What's the actual value? So what we have here is at some point, there's a week's worth of data. And at some point, 10 actions were taken on the page. Most days had some views, but on this, and likes went up and down. But on this particular day, you had actions taken. Now, I'd want to then go and see, well, what caused the actions to be taken? What was going on? But as I say, any business page, you should be able to get this and get lots of data about your business before people even get to your website. You can have a whole checkout process going on on social media and you can learn lots about the people who are there. Um, lots of businesses, social is their main way to engage with customers. And there's lots of information out there to be found. Now, I did mention that you could look at search. OK, so somebody tippity taps a search query into a search engine, something like Google. Um, it's possible for you to see for terms that are relevant to your website. So the tool here is called Google Search Console. And if you don't have if you have a website, one of the tools I'd really be strongly advising you link to your web website is the Google Search Console. It looks at those organic, those non-paid search terms, and it shows you how well your website does for them. It helps you to understand, you'll have heard the term ranking, how you rank on search for various different terms, for those questions that people ask for the keywords. What that also does, we're going to be talking about website measurement in a moment, it links through and integrates into Google Analytics. So you can see the step before people get to your website in with what happens when they get to your website. So as well as just seeing what terms you're winning on and what terms you're not winning on, maybe you can see there's something about the intent that people who search for, you know, uh, paper clips for sale today are more likely to go ahead and buy paper clips than people who are looking for the history of paper clips. Don't know how I got onto paper clips today. There must be some paper clips on my desk that's got me thinking about something that's cheap and readily available. Um, so be thinking about, you know, Google Search Console will get you to see the step that happens before people to get to your website. Um, you can look at the different phrases. That you and, and sometimes just looking at those phrases, what do people search for me? What do people who find me search for? You know, you can really start to see some intent behind those things. If you want to know more about search and how that works, we've got a couple of webinars, as you would imagine, all about search and being found. Um, as I say, this kind of search works if you have a website, you're trying to drive traffic to your website then Google Search Console is a great tool. Check out our other webinars, though, that will help you there as well. And a really, really important tool um, for any business that has any kind of local intent is the Google Business Profile. And from the Google Business Profile, which is one of my favorite tools for businesses, 
um, small businesses starting out, anything with a local intent, trying to reach the local community. We talk about it in, I think, Find Customers with Google Maps goes into a lot of detail about how to set up um, a, a Google business profile. But something people don't necessarily think about is actually there's a lot of information in the terms of data on the Google business profile. So Google business profile has its own insight section and it tells you things like how many people found you by knowing who you were and searching for you directly and how many people were searching for your category of business locally and you happened to be the one they found. Now, actually, as a business, well, I want more of both, please. I want more people to find me by because they know who I am and I need more people to find me because I'm well known in the area for this particular. But they are very different things. So you might find that lots of people are finding you because they're looking for a plumber in the area, but people aren't necessarily searching for you by name. So you can do work to improve both of those things. So if you want to be found locally on Google search, if you want to be found locally, get the pin on the map or get boosted in your local area, then do check out our sessions on the Google business profile. And if you've got a profile already, head to the insights section, look and see what it's telling you. It will tell you people who made requests. You can, you know, you can hit directions on a map to a business. It will tell you whereabouts geographically your direction requests are coming from. Now it doesn't pinpoint exact addresses, but you can start to see, you can sort of start to see how far away people are coming from. You can see when people are looking. Are they looking at your photos? Are they interacting with different content? If you make a post, are people looking and interacting with that? can start to see that you're going to answer some of those green questions around engagement. You might see something about when people are hitting that click to call button. You might notice more phone calls coming in. And how do you know where they've come from? Well, they might be coming through your Google business profile. If you've done some work to improve it, get the word out there. You'll be able to start seeing what what traffic is coming because of the work you're doing, which will help you to evaluate what's going on. Um, so really great tool all round. Um, don't know if I mentioned, but it is a free tool to use as well. It just takes your time, your effort, your love in getting it up and off the ground. And then we have Google Analytics. So if you have a website, I really hope you are measuring it. OK, now. We're going to talk about Google Analytics and what people do on your website. It is kind of the original and best, I would say. Um, there are, I don't think I've come across much in the way of data. When people need some data from their website, there's always been a way to find that data in Google Analytics. What that can mean is that, um, you know, when people first open it, there's a lot to see on it. And what people tend to do is get a little bit scared, close it up and go and do something that they're more comfortable doing. OK, what I would say as well is with website analytics, depending on how you've built your website, if you have a CMS or if you're using something like a Shopify, they do have their own um, analytics quite often around like shopping basket analytics and things. So it is worth seeing what you already have. Um, what people do tend to find is they're great to get started with, but they might well find limits. But you can also integrate those things like your shopping basket analytics into your Google Analytics. So you can get a really good picture of what's going on on your website, pulling in from all the different places. So that's what we're going to spend the rest of our time together thinking about. We're going to think about the website. But as we're going through, um, thinking about what people are doing on your website. Every single click could be measured. The kind of art to it, the skill to it is working out, well, what are going to be the right things to measure? And we'll take a look at that in just a second after I've just checked in with Zoe again. Okay, so questions wise, like, so oh, we've got, oh, oh my word, 
So Crystal's got um, questions about structuring your own customer journeys. Interesting. I would seriously recommend, I mean, there's lots of, uh, um, lots and lots of tools out there. To me, your customer journey is kind of your um, basics of your digital marketing. So I would very first thing, if you haven't already, join us for the um, digital marketing strategy webinar when we'll think about, um, you know, all the different tools that you might have at your availability. Um, and then also, you know, I think any time tools and frameworks and there's lots of them out there. I tend to use a wall and some post-its. Um, and really think about walking through the steps that I have already and then think of that ideal customer journey. What do I want to do? It's a great um, from now on, every time you do a search or buy something on somebody else's website, you're not, you know, surfing the Internet. You're not just online shopping. Make that your own customer research. What do you like and dislike about various websites? What do you like and dislike about a checkout process? And then you can start to really identify things in the real world that might be blockers to people buying something. I don't like it when I've been on a website for four seconds and a pop-up takes over the whole screen and it tries to get my attention. And I don't like it when they don't make it easy to turn off cookies. So thinking about all those things that could get in the way of somebody getting to your site is a really good idea. OK, and we've also got Isaac with us. Hi, Isaac. Nice to have you with us about uh, methods to organically boost the Google business profile. The best way to boost a Google business profile is to have interesting things to say that are relevant to the people in your area. So to organically boost your Google business profile, getting honest reviews from people, writing really lovely descriptive um, text, writing good posts, having good pictures. As I say, join us for our um, webinar about finding customers with Google Maps, <clears throat> which talks about it. And I think there's a, a second one. One of our sh new shorter webinars also does talk in, in a bit more depth. I might ask um, Zoe if you can remember what um, that one's called, maybe uh, pop it. But with any of these, check out our website, which links all the webinars coming up. OK, I need to carry on because we are now going to talk um, for the rest of our time together, as I say, a little bit more in depth about Google Analytics. <clears throat> now, I've got a confession to make. Um, there are currently two versions of Google Analytics out there. And I've just noticed that we haven't quite updated our screenshots. So when I'm going to be talking about Google Analytics, um, you might not see exactly what I'm going to show you. But those pictures are probably really tiny anyway. So don't worry too much about that. I'm going to guide you through this two slightly different sets of language out there um, and two slightly different look and feel. Um, the reason for it is that websites are evolving. So the ways we use to measure and websites are evolving, customers are evolving, how we interact with the world online. We don't just sit in one place and do one have one screen that we um, interact with the internet. I very rarely use my computer unless I'm actually working already. And then I wouldn't possibly be browsing the internet when I should be working. But I might find something on the internet on my computer, then I might use my phone a bit later, I might use a tablet. So it's as, as our customer journeys have got more complex, the analytics system is evolving to try and help us to understand more complex human behavior, which is what's going on with these. So the section we've now come on to, we've thought about what my objective is, the questions we need to ask, where you're going to look for that information. And we're going to have a sort of think about, okay, well, that's great. I found the information. What on earth am I going to do with it? All right. So let's take a look. The first thing you'll find when you open up Google Analytics is that it can be a little bit overwhelming. As I've already mentioned, there's so much information on there. Actually, that's one of my favorite new features within the new version of Analytics, which is called Google Analytics 4, which if you are signing up from today or you signed up probably in the last six months or so and linked your website to Google Analytics, 
you won't have to worry about the fact that there's an old version of it or a new version. You will just have been put straight onto the new version, Google Analytics 4. Okay. So some of what I'm about to tell you will feel um, a, a little bit alien. So don't worry about that. If you see something different to what I'm going to show you, that's because you're on the on the newer version, which is fantastic. Um, so, but whichever version you're on can feel a little overwhelming. The great thing about the newer version is it gives you shortcuts to the places that you've been recently. So if I was looking at a particular report and I want to go back to that report, it's going to give me a shortcut and it says, it even says, oh, you looked at this report last week or you looked at this report about two weeks ago, which is really helpful to help you pick up where you left off. So that genuinely is the kind of feature that it's just been designed to evolve and help you. Okay. But it can feel a bit overwhelming. And one of the problems is that analytics has its own language. So not only do you have to speak your own language, not only do you have to speak the language of your business, you have to be able to translate that to analytics. But the good thing is there is a glossary included in the analytics platform. So if you ever don't understand one of the terms, there should be a little question mark next to the term itself and you hover over it and it gives you a little explanation of what it is. So, for example, we are going to see a difference between um, visits and visitors. Maybe we'll see um, a difference between sessions and engaged sessions. All of these terms are fairly precise in their language. So we need to make sure we're measuring the right thing. If somebody, if we see a, a, the difference in a number of visits to visitors, a visitor is as far as they can work out one person, but that one person might make several visits. So our visits number should always be bigger than the number of visitors. We might see that we have those, you know, those first visits that people make. Is it their first time or are they a repeat visitor? There again, the number of um, th those numbers may be different. So it, it's worth um, understanding. And if you don't understand any of the terms, hover over that little glossary. It's going to help you. OK, but what we want to find out, it's going to help us to find out where in the world geographically wise people are coming to what they do before they get to us, what they do after they leave us, what they do while they're on our site. OK. When abouts in the day are they visiting? When abouts in the week are they visiting? Even when abouts in the month? You might find that you've got a really strong connection between payday and people buying from you. And with that nugget of information, well, how are you going to make use of the power of the fact that people buy more in the last week of the month, for example? OK, so analytics. First thing you're going to need to do is head over to um, Google Analytics and sign up for an account. Um, you will automatically be taken through. Nowadays, if you're setting up for the first time, you'll be set, set, taken onto the new platform. Um, if you don't have Google Analytics 4 yet and you've been maybe using Google Analytics for a year or more, you want to check whether you're on the universal, which is the old version, or the Google Analytics 4, which is the new version, simply because the old version will be being put quietly off to uh, into retirement later on this year. So it's really important you start getting yourself transitioned across now in order that when it's retired, you have that data available to you. OK, so head over to Google Analytics, choose a name for your account. You're going to need to, if you've got several websites, give them names that are relevant that make them easy. You're only you're the only person who's going to see this. It just makes it easy for you to see it. And also choose an industry category. Choosing an industry category helps you to um, benchmark anonymous, on an anonymous aggregated level. Are you comparing against other retailers? Are you comparing against other manufacturers? Are you comparing against other travel companies? It just helps you to make sure because, you know, Fashion retail moves a lot quicker than somebody selling industrial widgets, for example. So the, the numbers you're looking at, when you're looking at benchmarking, when you're looking at bounce rates and is something good, then benchmarking will help you um, to work out. So you're best to be looking at the right category. 
you then have to, whichever version of analytics you're using, you need to tell analytics that you own this website and you need to tell the website that it's OK to send your data to analytics. And they do that with a code, with a tracking code. So here we've got a UA code, which is on admin tracking info tracking code. If you're using on um, uh, and this is one of the ways you can tell whether you're looking at Universal Analytics or Google Analytics for um, a tracking ID that starts UA is an old version. One that's a tag. You'll see the word tag a lot more um, is all about uh, starts with a G and that's the newer version. OK, basically what you need to do is take that code that's unique to your version of analytics and prove to the website that you own it and you want that information tracked by putting that code into every page of your website that you want to be tracked. Now there, again, a few years ago, you had to be super busy with HTML to be able to do that. Depending on how you've built your website, there's going to be, you're not the first person now who's ever had to do this, I'm sure. So to install this code onto every page of your website, you either ask the person who built the website and they'll help you to do it. Or if you built the website yourself, say you used Wix or WordPress or GoDaddy or one of the other website builders out there, there'll either be a place on your template for the analytics code, or maybe there's a plugin or a widget that has it there. You're not the first person to do it. Best way I always find, because all they're, they're all slightly different, is go to the help pages of whoever um, hosts your website and type in Google Analytics. And it will find you the help pages that tell you how to do it for your particular website. Some of them it's built in into the sides. I've managed to help people to do this um, on multiple occasions. And if I can do it, I have full faith that you can do it too. But that code needs to go on every single, at the start of every single page. It's hidden from view. It's, you know, it's not something that appears on your website, but in the background, all it's doing is if the very first thing it loads and it tells um, any actions that happen after that it's OK to measure them. So now we get down to the good stuff. OK, the good stuff, um, we've got four main areas of reporting, and this is where another of the slight language difference comes in. First of all, we've got audience. OK, audience are who are the people? Who are the users? So we start to think about any of those questions we had again about the people, about what they're up to. Audience is the who. All right. Then we have acquisition which is how I found them or how they found me. So think about all those reaching questions. How did I acquire them? What were they doing just before they got to me? Then on the old version, we have behavior. What do they do? On, how do they behave on my website? On the new version, and here's another way you can tell, the, the language is engagement. OK, so engagement is what are they engaging with? How engaged are they? So rather than just what are they doing, there's a little bit of a deeper psychological level, I guess, there. What are they interested in? What are they engaging in? What I'm, am I doing that is engaging them? All right. But similar sorts of data in each area. And then we have conversions. What are they worth to me? And in the newer version, that's called monetization. But it's still all about those pound notes um, in terms of working out, you know, what the money side of things, OK? So that's your areas of um, analytics. Then we've got, I think, probably the final piece of the puzzle in terms of, well, what are you actually looking at? So what you normally see in either version of Google Analytics is you see a little chart at the top, which will be like a run chart, um, engagement over time, for example. It's a little graph that shows you a nice picture of where things are going on. Below that, you'll get the actual numbers in the data. And we have two areas to think of. The, the dimension is the what. So you'll get a table. And down the side, the what, the dimension is what you are measuring. So here we've got channel wise, people coming in through search, through referrals, finding us directly. OK, then across the top and forming the majority, the bulk of what we're looking at are the numbers, also known as the metrics. So here we'll see when we acquire people, are we 
users, new users, there's one of those little pieces of, of, of knowledge. And you can see very, very small, but that's where you'll also see the question mark. And then the data below, like any other data table, it shows us we can draw along and see, oh, well, referrals came up with 17.89% of our users came through for referrals. All right. So if we're asking ourselves a how many, we want to be looking at the, the metrics, the numbers, all right? The what's the, you know, what was the most? Then you're going to be looking at those dimensions. So let's quickly take a look at that REAM framework again and maybe orientate ourselves with some of those questions we asked before. So we've got reach. How are people finding me online? Okay, those reaching out and finding. Now I've already kind of given away the answer to this first one. I do that to myself quite a lot. Um, how are people finding me online? Well, we want to look at the acquisition, all right? So I go to my acquisition area at the side. How are people finding me online? One of my favorite um, old style reports is acquisition. Then it's all traffic and the channels report, okay? And that's, it shows you, and we've already seen a little cut from that. It's about before people got to me, what were they doing? So did they find me through search? Did they find me through paid search? Did they find me through social media? Did they know my website address already and just came directly through to me? If there's any, ever anyone you don't understand, I would want to be looking at each of those and working out what the channel is. What activity am I doing? Because how are people finding me online? OK, well, maybe I want to drive more of those people. You can start to look at that. OK, so in um, I mentioned that you can link in your Google Search Console with your um, Google Analytics and then start to really analyze. Well, not just they came to me through search, but what search terms seem to work for me. Um, you might see that, well, we're doing a lot of work on social media, but are the referrals coming through from social media? Do we need to improve that? Do we need to work out, because obviously different social media platforms have different things that work. You know, sometimes it's a link in the comments. Sometimes it's the link in the bio and that sort of thing. Are we actually constructing our social media posts to drive people to our website? Is that what we even want them to do? So lots of questions that that could open up. Um, and you might say, oh, well, somebody's referring lots of um, uh, relationships, you know. So some uh, maybe I'm in hospitality and the local um, tourist board is sending me traffic. Oh, well, that's a really great source of, of, of um of, 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 of traffic to me, how can I develop some time with them and, and make sure that they've got all the information that they need? So the next thing we've got is engage. What are people engaging with when they find it? And in the new version of analytics, we've dedicated a whole section to that. We can see how long they're spending engaged, which areas are most likely. Are they, are they watching particular videos? Are they enjoying particular content? So in the old version, you'd look under the behavior reports. And in the new version, we'll look under the engagement reports. And maybe we just want to take a, f a first view. We can look at it at page level. Which of the pages are people spending most time on? Which of the pages are people, you know, spending a lot of... Um, if, if I've got a two-minute video and people are spending one minute 30 on there, well, maybe that tells me that that video's they're starting to watch it but there's something happening on that video that means they're not seeing it through to the end. So you can really start to think about, you know, what are they engaging with when they find me online? Those engagement questions. What are they engaging with just before they go ahead and buy something from me? If you have a link to call you on all different pages, which is the actual page that they are engaging with that link from? Okay. So we can see how different people are engaged. So we might flip that on its head and think, OK, these are the ones that nobody's engaging with. So why am I lovingly spending my time keeping these pages up to date if nobody's ever really interested in them? Now, is that because I'm not directing people to them or is that because they're just not interested in that field? And then that, what we will find is that every single question we ask, another 10 questions could come off the back of it. 
you know. So aren't they viewing me because I'm not linking to it? Why aren't they viewing it? Well, it might be that it's not interesting. It might be that they can't find it. It might be that it's actually got the wrong title. Or maybe there's just something about the audience that's coming through that isn't interested in that particular area. And if, for instance, something that we see a lot is that you somebody might get all the way through to the payment page and then leave. And that's a great one. My favorite thing to do with a business and for businesses to do is take that theoretical data from your um, analytics reports and then use that to walk through your website process. I've seen it with people where they've had lots of people getting um, to the basket and then realize they don't offer an option to ship to the country that they're coming from. So they instantly lose all those people. Maybe they'll get to the um, the basket and only then see the tax or the shipping or the delivery times. So it's worth going to that with a, an open mind, following those steps through and seeing, well, if I lose somebody, what is it that's, about, is, that's putting them off? OK, so we want to make sure that we use the... Um, the data and take it into that real world and really walk through those processes. Now, when it comes to activate, okay, getting people to take the action we want to take. So we've identified putting something in the basket or signing up for an email newsletter. There's lots and lots of ways with activation um, that Google Analytics can help you. So first of all, you identify those actions. And then here it we might. So here we've taken a look at which channel is driving the most bookings. So rather than just who's sending us the most traffic, we've gone deeper and we've set up um, goals and conversions and we've set up our um, engagements and our monetization to show us what we want to achieve. It's a deeper step. You need to tag up um, the kinds of actions that you want people to take. But then you can see those and you can sort on them and you can see when you are converting, when you are winning those. And it doesn't just have to be money. You could tag up that when somebody signs up for um, an email newsletter, that we're counting that as, as, a, as something that's converting. So we want to track that. We want that as one of our goals. And, and you can absolutely do just that. So, you know, with that particular screen, it showed that although lots of people were coming in through search, the people who are actually buying were coming in having been referred. So it flips around what we think of as value. OK, um, but, you know, think about the actions you could take off the back of that. Every question leads you on to five more questions. And then finally, with nurture, you know, getting people coming back is about nurturing, getting them to leave reviews, getting them to recommend you within your own website. You might set up what they've done here is set up quite a complicated sales funnel, whereas they don't they don't stop at the delivery. They go on and ask people to review them. So they're me measuring that. It might be about you go back to your Google business profile and see if you or onto your Instagram and see where people are liking you, recommending you, sharing with you. OK, with this particular nurture, it's about a conversion. They want to see there's a special rapport that they've built. There's a lot that you can do, but get yourself started with the basics and then look to think which of the I, I, um, actions I need to identify that are really going to make me a difference to my business. Um, but reviews just I mean, it's worth highlighting. It's every single point that reviews and um you know, recommendations, that online word of mouth, if you can be putting in place a program to, you know, capture the actions after the sale, encourage people after the sale, it's really useful. Join us for some of our sessions on social media, actually, where we do talk about reviews and recommendations a lot. And then think about how you could measure those. It might not be within your Google Analytics, but back into your Instagram or your Facebook or your Google business profile. You can see Google business profile reviews and measure them and work to improve them there. All right. I have just I'm about to run straight out of time. Um, the questions. Um, oh, fantastic. I can see that Zoe's been answering as we go. Amazing. Thank you for that, Zoe. It's why we like working together. So next steps. What I would love to do as a final um, piece from you um, is for you to let Zoe know in the comments what you're going to do 
as an action from today because it's really important to tell the universe um have the whole of everybody working uh watching today as your accountability buddies say it out loud and you're much more likely to make it happen one of those things if you're based in the uk and you're working for a small business or for a charity is to sign up at g.co forward slash uk mentoring for one of our free one-to-one -one mentoring sessions other than that thank you so much for your time today it's been my absolute pleasure to take you through um the session on measurements and analytics i hope it's given you food for thought um zoe and i will be back on um uh with other webinars coming up. So do check out our website and see um, the, the upcoming schedule. We do change that fairly regularly, so that hopefully there's lots to learn next. Um, other than that, we look forward to welcoming you again to another Google Digital Garage webinar sometime soon. Have a great day.